I'm Fanny Gerson. I am a pastry chef, an entrepreneur, a cookbook author, and a mom. And I'm gonna share with you a delicious recipe from my cookbook, My Sweet Mexico. We're gonna be making filled donuts. I have a donut shop in Brooklyn called Fan Fan Donuts. And I'm gonna show you a filled donut homemade strawberry jam and a pastry cream. So when my sister and I were growing up, you know, my my mom, you know, kind of, it's not that we didn't have sweets at home, but we didn't have junk. And it was always like, if you're gonna have something sweet or, you know, like an indulgence, it has to be, you know, from somebody that, you know, takes care in what they do. So it was always like a special treat. All right, so we're gonna get started. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the ingredients. Don't worry about the measurements. You're gonna have a link. So just focus on, you know, pay attention to, you know, sort of the method and then worry about the specifics later. Really use this as a canvas to make it your own. Now I love, in Mexico we use a lot of lime for everything. And because I use a strawberry jam filling for, for the original recipe, I like having that little bit of tanginess as part of the dough but you can substitute it with lemon, uh, vanilla bean, a little vanilla extract. So the first thing we're gonna do is dissolve the yeast and you want your milk at least room temperature, but if you warm it up, you wanna make sure it's not warmer than your body temperature, okay? So that's very important because otherwise it's gonna kill the yeast. How cute is this whisk? <laughs> I think I'm gonna steal it for my son. Anyways, you're just gonna take it just a little bit and you don't have to whisk it vigorously or anything like that. I'm just gonna add a little bit more. And the reason you do this is you wanna make sure you can see it bubble, is just to see that it's working. I'm gonna set this aside. You need the hook attachment to make this. Now, technically you could make it by hand, but honestly, it's uh, a very kind of sticky dough and to get the right texture that you need, um, I really recommend using a hook, a uh, standing mixer with a hook attachment. Oh, let me show you. Look at that. So now you can see the beautiful yeast. It's nice and bubbly. So we're gonna add the yeast and then we're gonna add the rest of the ingredients, <laughs> basically, except the butter. And the, the order doesn't matter so much, so don't stress about it. Okay. So it's all coming together. So next, I like to add the flavoring. If you're gonna season your dough with something dry, you wanna mix that like the nutmeg or you know cinnamon or something like that, you wanna mix that with the flour. Okay. I'm going to stop that for a second and I'm just going to scrape it a little bit. Okay. All right. The sugar, a little bit of salt. milk. So it's going to look a little bit, you know, kind of wet, like it's not coming together. So you want to stop it. Just give it a little bit of, give it a little push, a little help. All right. All right. All right, so right now you can see it's kind of a smooth dough. It's a little bit elastic, but it's still a little bit sticky. So this is the point where if you need to add more flour, which I feel we do need, and the reason I feel that is if I stop it, it's still kind of holding together, but it's, you know, it's still a bit too wet. All right, so this is the, the time where you may want to add some more flour before you add your butter. So 
So before you add the butter, you want to make sure it's actually room temperature before adding it so it incorporates better. So we're going to add it now that the dough is ready and, you know, all together. All right, so the dough is just about ready and I'm going to show you. So it's elastic for sure. <laughs> and we're going to put this in our grease bowl that we had before. So it's not a wet dough, but it's definitely a little bit sticky, but not too sticky. <laughs> this is the hardest part because you have to wait. But while we wait, we're going to be making the fillings. We're just going to cover this with plastic wrap and we're going to set it aside to double. All right, so now we're going to make strawberry jam. I want to talk a little bit about jam for a second. So the pot that you want to use pretty much something heavy duty or stainless steel, copper, and we're gonna be using fresh strawberries, but right now it's not really strawberry season. So if you're gonna use frozen, it's totally fine. But what you wanna do is you want to thaw them, strain them, discard the juice or use it for something else. Um, and then you're gonna proceed the same way, but you're gonna want to add one more uh, lemon or lime juice, all right? So this is very simple. We make all our jam fillings at the shop, and because we don't know what we're gonna get at the market, it's always like, oh, whatever's good at the market, that's the jam we're making. So you're just gonna put your sugar, and I'm just gonna stir it up. This is a really simple recipe that you can throw quickly, and there's nothing like homemade jam. Also, if you're gonna use this recipe at, you know, when strawberries are at the ripest, you can decrease the sugar by a third of a cup, you know, up to half a cup at the most. But you do need the sugar. The sugar has two purposes. It gives sweetness, but it also helps with the texture. And then we're gonna add some lime juice. Now this is perfect because we use the zest for the dough and we're gonna use the lime juice, but you can also use lemon if you prefer. And what the acid does, it helps, you know, cut, cut a bit of the sweetness and have a little bit more balance, but it also helps, you know, with the pectin, so you have a really nice texture. And salt, just salt always heightens the flavor of whatever you're, you're doing. All we're gonna do is let it come up to a boil, and then we're gonna adjust the heat so that it's at a nice simmer, and we're gonna skim it off as it starts cooking. And we're gonna put a plate, any plate you have in the freezer, that's gonna help us um, later on to see if it's just set right. So I'm just gonna set this off to the side so we can start um, with the pastry cream. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna infuse the milk with some delicious vanilla bean. So you wanna split it in the middle and then with the back of the knife, you're gonna scrape it like that. And then you're gonna put it together, both the seeds and the bean. If you don't have access to vanilla bean or they're too expensive, because they can be too expensive, you can do, you can do a sort of like a lemon pastry cream and you can do kind of uh, like lemon zest. Take a whole peel of the lemon and do it that way or of lime or cinnamon, or if you really want the vanilla, but again, you can't find it or it's too expensive, you can do exactly this, and then right at the end, add a little bit of vanilla extract. So we're gonna bring this up to a simmer, and then we're gonna cover it, so that we allow the vanilla to really get into that milk and give it that delicious flavor. All right, so now, this has been sitting for about half an hour. It smells amazing. Somebody should come up with a line of like pastry, you know, perfumes. It probably exists, I don't know. Anyway, so you wanna take out the beans that you scraped and you're not gonna throw them away. You're gonna rinse them and then dry them off and you can, you know, stick them as is in some sugar, but you have to make sure it's really, really completely dry. So you're gonna let them dry it for a couple of days or you can grind them with sugar and make vanilla sugar. It's delicious. All right, so now we're gonna turn this back on so that it comes to a simmer. So you're gonna take a bowl, and a little trick that I like to do is just take a small, you know, damp towel, and then that's gonna help you prevent it from sliding, right? And so that's 
gonna save the day. So you're gonna put your egg yolks into your bowl. You wanna try to get as much as you can. Your egg yolks is what's gonna give it its thickness together with the cornstarch. All right, so you're gonna mix these together. And you wanna whisk that, let the sugar, I actually normally like to add the sugar before, but that's okay. All right, I'm gonna set this aside. Now we're gonna add our salt. And this is getting close to coming up to a simmer. So what we're gonna do is gonna add a little bit of the hot milk into the bowl. And this is one of the reasons you wanna make sure it doesn't slide. And then we're gonna put, mix that mixture and put it back. That's called tempering. And basically all you're doing is bringing up the eggs to a similar temperature so that when you combine the liquids, you don't make scrambled eggs. Sweet scrambled eggs, not so good. I don't know, maybe it's a thing somewhere. <laughs> so now when you start to see it bubble, it's ready and then I like to turn it off so that you don't feel rushed, very important. And if it has a little bit of skin, don't worry about it. Everything is gonna come together, you're gonna strain it at the end. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little bit while at the same time I'm mixing it, just a little bit at a time, because if you put too much in, you're again gonna make scrambled eggs. You don't want that. All right, so a little bit more. Dun, 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 dun. So you want to have at least about half. You don't need to measure it, you can eyeball it, but basically what you're trying to get them is to be, you know, a similar temperature. All right, a little bit more. And once you have like that, you're gonna bring it all back together. So again, in a continuous stream while continuing to whisk. And then what I like to do is kind of start close to the pot and then go up a little bit more. That way it's just like extra assurance. All right. Once you have everything together, you can turn on your heat again. You want it at like medium heat and you're gonna continue whisking until basically you, you don't see the bubbles anymore. Once you start seeing the little foam disappear, it means like everything is coming together. You know you're getting close to, to what you're looking for. As I'm whisking it, I start to feel it thicken and I start to get super excited because I'm like, oh my God, it's coming together. It starts coming together beautifully. And then it's gonna start to bubble. If I stop for a second, you can start to see it starts to bubble, but you don't wanna leave it aside because then it's gonna burn, right? So once it starts to bubble, you know you're about a minute away from it being done. I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna add the butter. And then with the heat that it has, it's just gonna start to dissolve. It smells so good. I know I keep saying that, but it's just so true. It smells amazing. So now that the butter has been incorporated, you don't see any pieces, I'm just gonna strain it. Oh, so beautiful. And don't worry if you have like little pieces of vanilla left or if you somehow got, you know, a little grainy bits, that's why you strain it. It's like your insurance. <laughs> your insurance that you're gonna have a silky smooth pastry cream. All right. So beautiful. And I do love seeing those little vanilla bits. <laughs> and then after you strain it, you wanna make sure you get everything from the bottom, because there's a lot there. So don't forget about that. You're gonna put a piece of plastic wrap directly on top. And that's just to prevent a skin from forming. You're just gonna put it in an ice bath. 
and you're gonna leave it in the ice bath until it's chilled and then you're gonna refrigerate it until you're ready to use it and you can make it you know up to like three days in advance if you want so I have a plate here that's been in the freezer take a little bit of the jam put it on the plate and then I'm gonna throw it back in the freezer for about a minute or two all right so I just put this in the freezer for about a minute and the first thing I see is that it's not like I move it around and it's staying still so that's the first indication that it's ready and the other thing is I kind of like to put my finger like that and see if it moves and that's really nice it holds together and when it cools this is going to come together even more and one more thing so if you see most of the strawberries have dissolved now we're going to be piping this so you want to make sure that you don't have any any lumps because once you pipe them sometimes it can explode so a couple ways to do that to just, you know, be extra sure is you can either take like a masher or mash it with the back of the spoon or you can even wait for it to cool just slightly and do a hand blender. But this is so delicious. All right, so now your dough has doubled, but I did forget one thing. So, you know, uh, a lot of people use brioche dough to make donuts and they make delicious donuts. They're very rich, very buttery. When you have a dough like that, you really need to give it a lot of time to rest. And so, yeah, that's why you usually have it sit overnight. It can take a long time to, to rise. Like I said before, it can take like two to three hours. So you can also let it rise for an hour and then cover it again and put it in the fridge, take it out and then do this step. So I just wanted to show you that there's, you know, different ways to make it. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of flour and I'm going to take my dough out. Then I'm just going to take a part of my dough I'm going to very soft, so beautiful. Oh. See, and even before, as you saw, like it was a bit sticky, now it's even less so. So you don't need a lot of flour at all. So we're gonna roll it out. You're gonna roll it out to about half an inch thickness. When you roll out, what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna roll from beginning to end. It's always a good idea to start in the middle and go this way and then that way, just because it's gonna be easier to get an even, um, an even thickness. You don't want it, you don't wanna be able to see through it. You don't also don't want to feel like it's gonna be heavy. Don't worry about whether it's you know, perfectly square or round, that doesn't matter. All that matters is that it's even. And then what I like to do is you know kind of give it a little we do this at the shop all the time you know every single batch we make we always put this it's like the added added extra load and then what i like to do is kind of get down so that you can see that it's even so you can cut two and a half inches but you don't want them too big i'm feeling like i'm gonna do like little little guys um my son, he's three and a half, he loves sweets. He loves food in general, and he obviously loves donuts. So I want to make some little ones for him. So you're going to take your flour, and you're going to have a sheet pan with a little bit of uh, parchment. And you're going to dip it a little bit in the flour, and then you're going to press down, and you're going to move it just so that it's even. So I like to kind of cut them all at once and then take out, you can do it two ways. You can do it kind of like as you cut them, start putting them on your prepared sheet pan or what I like to do is kind of roll them all, I mean cut them all and then lift this part. So you wanna make sure that you have enough space in between, like you get as many as you can but just so that you have your nice rounds. Oh, not quite gonna make it. So if you lift this up, you want to kind of just be careful 
Just be gentle. No need to rush it. All right, we're gonna set this aside. And if you have one that you don't love, like this one pulled, so I don't wanna kinda use it, I'm just gonna put it with the scraps and I'm gonna re-roll those. And then if you have any scraps, you wanna kind of leave them aside before you start to re-roll them. So then I'm gonna take the rest of the dough, roll them out, finish cutting them, and then when you re-roll these scraps, what you wanna do, imagine they've been resting for a little bit. So instead of just kind of putting it together, because then that's gonna make them tough again, you kind of just wanna lay them on top of each other, kind of like that. So you wanna let it have enough time for the gluten to just, you know, relax, take it easy. So once you have these all in your sheet pan, again, you wanna make sure you have enough room, not just to grow, but because we're gonna cut around them when we fry. We're just gonna put a little cloth and we're gonna set it aside to double. All right, so our oil is heating up. Now the type of oil is important. You wanna use something that has a high smoke point. So while that's, it's getting close to what we needed, these are nice and puffy. Look how beautiful they are. I don't know if you can appreciate that, but they look like really cute pillows. So we're just gonna cut them. We're gonna cut just the, the paper round. It doesn't matter, you know, like how even it is at all, because this is just to help us put them into the oil. All right, so while this is warming up, it's almost ready. I have all of the donuts cut out. And what you're gonna need is, you know, a sheet pan with a wire rack. If you don't have a wire rack, that's okay. You can use paper bags or paper towels. I actually love paper bags. They absorb a lot of oil. And then you want a bowl with sugar. So I'm gonna be putting a few of the pieces of donuts into the hot oil with the paper. And then with some tongs, I'm gonna slide, it's gonna slide out. This is just gonna, again, you could do this with your hand, but they're so soft and tender that this just makes it so much easier. You want the temperature just right. If it's too hot, they're gonna cook on the outside, but they're gonna be raw on the inside. And if it's too cold, they're gonna eventually cook, but it's gonna be too oily. And then just let it go. You're gonna see it bubble almost immediately. And then sometimes you don't even need the tongs. You see that? Beautiful. Don't force it. If they come off right away, great. If not, that's what you have the tongs for. See, very easy. Beautiful. Once they have a nice golden color that's not too dark, then we're gonna turn them around very carefully. So now we have our donuts that are fried and ready to go. And you wanna make sure you roll them in the sugar while they're still warm, just so that, you know, it really sticks to it. But you also don't wanna burn yourself. So you can, you know, let them cool down. While they're cooling down, you can get your jam and your pastry cream ready in the bags. So once we have that, I'm gonna move that to the side. So if you don't have a pastry bag, you can actually use something like a Ziploc bag at the corner. You can do that as well. So, but I just want to show you, you know, one little trick that I like to do. So you're going to cut. And again, if you, and if you have a pastry bag and you don't have a tip, or if you're using a Ziploc bag and don't have a tip, just do this part. So what I want to show you is I like to do a little twist and then push it inside before I fill it. So what that does is that as I fill it, it won't come out. I'm gonna move this aside. I'm gonna have two bowls here and you can either pipe them and use the tip to cut a little hole. You can do them from the top. I kinda like how they look on the side. Oh my God, my mouth is drooling. All right, so 
you're just going to put this in and you're gonna start to feel kind of how it starts to come out. Look at that, yeah. Don't, don't stress about it if it has a little too much. You can always just eat a little bit off, <laughs> right? So what you wanna do is you want to pipe in, then you want to stop, right? And then it kind of slowly allow it to, like as it's filling, it's gonna start to push the bag, right? I think I'm gonna do three of each. I took one serving, right? <laughs> so these are so cute. I'm so happy with these small, but again, you can make them bigger. These are just little guys. So the same thing with the pastry cream, you're gonna fill it and then you kind of want to stop. You want to give it enough time to kind of catch up and then you're gonna feel it getting a little bit heavier and slowly, slowly it's gonna start to come out, right? Just like that. All right, I'll do it again. Okay, let's see if I've learned how to eat a donut <laughs> without getting it all over my face. All right, let's see. Mm. Look at that. Mm. I don't know if you can see that, but the dough is nice and spongy. It's not very oily, like I'm grabbing it. I mean, you saw we fried it in oil, but you don't feel the oil. I don't have it all over my hands. It has a lot of filling. That's how I like it. Mmm, now I gotta try this one. Mmm. Mmm. I don't know which one I like better. Mmm. It's so, so good. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you have fun. I know that uh, frying things, making donuts can feel intimidating, but I hope that, you know, with this video, you feel a little more comfortable and at ease making them. So if you do make them, please share. You know, I'd love to, to hear from you. If you have any questions, reach out. And if you want to check other recipes, my cookbook this is my first baby before my actual baby and uh, if you do come to new york come visit our shop pan pan donuts in brooklyn and now i'm gonna go because i have lots of donut eating to do bye